We were over the halfway stage in the Bilbao Masters. Round six was played today. Nakamura and Carlsen played their return game. And although Nakamura had the white pieces, he didn't really get any advantage out of the opening. It was a well-contested game, but neither player made much headway, and that ended in a draw. Wesley So had a very strong attack against Sergei Karyakin, but Karyakin defended extremely well. He's, he's good at that, and counter-attacked all, and looked like he had Wesley on the ropes, but that game also ended in a draw. Which leaves us with the game between Wei Yi and Anish Giri. So, the Chinese 17 year old with the white pieces, Giri played a Berlin and Wei Yi went into the end game. So, you can see the start of the Berlin end game on the board. And the game went along pretty familiar lines for a long way. Um, this is actually a, a very well-known variation, and here you can see that Bax King is in check and needs to make a decision, and well, many games have gone King E8 here. For example, uh, the game between Carlsen and Anand from their World Championship match in Sochi went like this, and... Indeed, Geary has played this on a couple of occasions. Um, well, okay, you can you can find that in in my videos elsewhere on on the YouTube channel. Um, but today, Geary did something different. Instead of playing King E8, he played the King to C8. I think when you play E8, the King to E8, it still does a very good job of defending these kingside pawns uh, after exchanges. After king c8, this is a riskier move because you can see that it, it's going to take much longer for the queen's rook to get into the game. When the king goes to e8, then of course you can play the rook to d8 sometimes. Um, and so this gives white the chance to fight for the initiative straight away. I think if black is given time, given two moves, b6 and king b7, black will have no difficulties whatsoever. So white has to react very quickly here. Therefore, knight g5, good move. Now, of course, white would very much like to exchange off that bishop, which covers, for example, the d7 square. So, Geary exchanges off and then plays b6. So, that maintains the security of the bishop on e6, this wonderful blockading piece. And once again, if black is given time, king b7 to connect the rooks, very harmonious position. I don't think black would have any difficulties at all. So white has to strike very quickly. So we well, recognise that, and he played g4, just launching the kingside majority. So this was exchanged. Now, if the, if the knight retreats to h6, this is absolutely miserable. Uh, the knight is just too passive here. The king comes up, rook to the h file. Dreadful position for black. So black has to play knight h4. Now, we would like to play f3, um, just to protect this, to close that square. But it, remarkably, after knight g6, black actually gets pretty good counterplay. So this hits the pawn, white has to defend it, and then king b7. And black is going to try and double on the h-file very quickly, rook h7, and black is fine in this position. So white has to, after knight h4, white has to exchange bishop for knight. But this is actually what white wants. The position simplifies. Now, given a couple of moves, the king advances to g3, the rook comes to h1. This is white's perfect position, because the king on g3 will be able to support the f-pawn's advance, and suddenly this kingside pawn majority is really potent. So black has to react quickly. King b7, king g2, and now, practically the only move in the position, you have to challenge on the h-file, otherwise rook h1 comes, so rook h8. With some threats, so white trades, and now this endgame that arises is pretty much forced. In fact, I would say it's pretty much forced after white played this move g4. 
So we've reached a very interesting end game where white has this uh, very nice kingside pawn majority. Black has four against three on the queen side, but of course it's less easy to make a pass pawn because of these double pawns. Now, if white's king were centralized, then, or let's say on g3, then this would be very easy to advance the pawn, and, and I think this would be a winning endgame. The problem is that white's king is too far from the action, and that gives black time to generate counterplay. Now here, I was I was commentating uh, on, on this game, and I thought this, that black should actually play b5 in this position. It looks very anti-positional, but it's it's not possible to to control these squares very well. So, for example, a3, well, the threat is b4, of course, to uh, displace the knight and then take on a2. So white plays a3. Then king b6. Now, if b4, then black can actually uh, get rid of this double pawn and, and get his own queenside majority in motion. So white plays king g2. And now... Black's king comes forward into the middle, and I, although this is still very complicated, I felt that this would give Black sufficient counterplay to make a draw. Although Black still has to be quite careful. But Geary played c5, which is uh, aesthetically more pleasing on the eye to put a pawn uh, on the opposite colour to the bishop, and also lets the the king into the game. So white's king advances. White's king needs to come to g3 and then to play f4. King c6. Now this pawn could be a problem, so this advances to a4. a6, and now king g3, so white is ready to set this uh, pawn majority in motion. b5, black also gets his pawns going. f4. Now this is already looking quite dangerous for black, and I think there's there's no doubt that black is on the back foot here. I think the only question is, can black hold the position? So let's see, b4, attacking the knight, and that's going to allow black's king into the game. But it's not possible straight away. One would like to play king d5, but then comes knight g5, and there's a nice tactic here. If king d4, then white, I mean, this looks potentially quite dangerous to uh, move the bishop out of the way and then maybe bring, bring the king in. But c3 check is a very strong move. And after this exchange, well, if king takes pawn, then, of course, white wins very simply by advancing the f-pawn. So the king has to go backwards, and then king f3, and the king shuffles across, and this must be winning for white. Well, soon, soon the king and pawn end game is going to be winning. So black can't play king d5 straight away. So first of all, bishop a2. And, and here, where Yi played the very attractive move knight d2, which to some extent dominates the bishop, and also there are other points to the move. But maybe it was better to play the king across into the middle. And this shuts out black's king, and you're perhaps ready with knight g5. And I think this is very, very tough for black to hold. But instead, where you played knight d2, as I said, a very tempting move, quite an elegant move, because it, it to some extent, dominates this bishop. And after king d5, black would like to play king d4. But now comes c3. Pawns are exchanged. So you can see what where Yi has done is, in retreating the knight, to control these squares... And this pawn controls these squares. So there's a barrier that shuts out black's king. And then 
he'll have a free hand to try to advance his kingside pawns. It's not easy, that's the thing, it really isn't easy. In fact, the best drawing chance for black in this position is to play c4. Giri blundered in this position, he played g5, and that's a, that's a clear mistake. Uh, he should have played c4, and this is still, I know this looks like a, a really ugly move, <laughs> blocking the bishop, but basically it allows black's king to maintain its strong position on d5. It also means that sometimes you can simply save this bishop and, and put it on b3. So, for example, king f3, and now g5. So if that's taken, then king takes pawn on e5. So white waits, and now black waits, let's say here. And knight f3 forces an exchange of pawns. But you can see white's pawns are now split. The bishop comes back into play, and actually, of course, white can try and win this position forever. But probably black can, with best play, black should hold this position. Still not simple, but black, I think, should hold. So Geary missed c4. He played g5 instead. And here, where ye also makes a mistake. He should have played c4 check. Once again, this irritating c pawn um, that just dislodges black's king from its best position. And here, well, if the pawn is taken, then the king and pawn endgame is an easy win. So f takes and the pawn, g pawn goes through or if g takes f4, then again the g pawn just runs through. Um, and if if the pawn isn't taken by the bishop, so for example, well, king d4, this wins in a uh, in very similar way. Actually, this is slightly tricky, um, but actually the pawn is going through. There's actually, this, this is a nice move. This is took fun. Black is, is running out of moves, and then g6, and then the pawn goes through. I mean, there are other ways to win as well. Um, and if king e, after c4 check, if king e6, then the king shuffles across. Well, you'll see that's very similar to the game continuation. Uh, so, but instead of c4, where ye played king f3, and again, this allows this move c4 to stabilize the position of the king in the middle of the board and that transposes back to the lines we just looked at but Giri played king e6 after the game he said he hallucinated um, and after c4 the trap snaps shut yeah he said he hallucinated he should have drawn but the thing is actually i think the mistakes there were uh, there's, it wasn't just one hallucination um, Seems like he he missed this move c4 on, on a couple of occasions. So uh, anyway, um, after c4, you can see the bishop is completely trapped. No way out. All those squares controlled by the knight. Now there's nothing to do. If the king goes backwards, then white's king come for comes forwards, and it's a very simple win. And if f6. Well, this this is the game continuation, of course. This is basically a king and pawn endgame. <laughs> well, with a little twist at the end. Of course, if this were just a king and pawn endgame, it would be a draw. The official score says g6 here. g6 was not played. That loses a pawn. So I'm guessing that this was played. And here we go. The king goes back. And in this position, Giri resigned. So let's just... Check this one out. If king h8, well, it's still possible to make a hash of this. In this position, black can play for stalemate, and that, of course, is a draw. But instead, after king h8, the best, the simplest way for white to win is to play knight e4, 
and the most elegant as well. And after bishop takes pawn, then knight f6, followed by g7 mate. There you go, a little problem finish. Um, so yes, uh, Giri resigned after king h6. Well, you know, it, it, this is a really complex game. So it's understandable that there were mistakes by both players. However, I'm going to go right back to this position and king c8. Because I think actually where Yi proved that after this move, black's position is extremely difficult. Because after this, after g4, this endgame of bishop against knight is almost forced. Um, and although perhaps with best play black could draw that, I think it's basically very, very difficult to defend. So it looks like king c8 is uh, not the best. So there we go. Um, that was the only decisive game of the round, but uh, that just brings Wei up to 50%, and Carlsen still leads the tournament.